get by It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See lights like a peach If you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Baby Einstein, Atari, Zapier, many more, how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Our sponsor today is Rise25.com, where it helps service professionals, doctors, lawyers, accountants, coaches, consultants, anyone working with clients one-on-one who want to shift away from just trading time for dollars and shift towards a one-to-many program is more leverageable. Um, You can go to rise25.com, learn more, download your free dream product ladder, which basically is a business plan on one sheet of paper that helps you see gaps in untapped revenue. Companies like Disney, Apple, the sporting industry, they all use versions of the product ladder. Justin even experienced a Rise25 event where we had barbecue together. So that was was fun. It was. (laughs) Um, so I want to introduce today's guest. I love Justin and what he does. It's fascinating. And you're going to find it fascinating too because it helps boost sales. And what Justin does is Justin Christensen, first of all, he went from bull rider, an electrician, right, to eventually yeah. co-founding Conversion Fanatics, which helps companies double customer sales and profits with A-B testing. Now, this is in all cases, so there's a disclaimer, right? But they are a full-service conversion rate optimization company. They've worked with companies like Hertz, PayPal, Investors.com, BlueJeans.com. I can rattle off a lot more. And we're going to dig deep in some of these case studies of actually what they did for these companies. Um, They help companies, if you're wondering what that means and what they do, they help decrease your cart abandonment. They help increase online sales conversions increase average order value, optimize ad campaigns, and cut out waste up to 80%. Um, He's the author of the book, Conversion Fanatic, How to Double Your Customer Sales and Profits with A-B Testing. Justin, thanks for joining me. Yeah, thanks for having me, Jeremy. My pleasure. I could talk each one of these, I mean, for like three hours. I mean, just (laughs) who doesn't want to decrease their card abandonment? What's the actual... You know, I've heard crazy statistics about what the actual card abandonment is. Do you like? Do you have your I mean, head around some of those? Is it? I mean, I mean I've, like 90%, I've seen it. Ninety-five. What? What have you seen? I've I've seen it up there in the ninety-five. Heck, we've even got one right now with a new a new funnel or a new offer that's going out that's got one hundred percent abandoned card rate. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. So we're working to fix that issue, obviously, but. Yeah, the biggest thing that I see there is you work so hard on your front end message and your your marketing to push people in to check out, but then when it gets to the checkout portion of it, you quit. You quit selling and it gives people an opportunity to yeah. you know, bounce for war, for whatever right. reason. Right. So it's what I've found is people just give up at that point in the process. Yeah. So you need to just really help hold that visitor's hand and help taking them through to the next step and get them to take that desired action you want to take yeah. by, you know, relaying what they're buying and the benefits and the the proof and all of those things that make them feel warm and fuzzy all the way throughout the entire process. But yeah, the, I mean, it's up there. I mean, we've seen in excess of 95% on a lot of cases. For the most part, you're going to see somewhere between on a good converting offer, anywhere between 50 to 60%. Mm. And you can do different things to help boost that, yeah. of course. That's mind-blowing, right? I mean, you spent all – and here's the thing, Just was interesting. Most people aren't tracking this, right? So they may think they're right. not getting orders. They may think their headline's off. So they may go start tweaking the headline where the it's working up until the cart, right? Yeah. I mean, you could, you could test headlines all day long. And, yeah, you, you might see some improvement. But what I typically do and or what our team does is we'll analyze where the visitors are at and where they're falling off. And then we'll laser focus in on that. So if we find out that we have an abandoned cart issue, we're not going to go and test the homepage, you know, to start. We want to fix that problem first. And 
it's more than just running a tactic or something like that. You're trying to really understand what holds the most weight on that page. What's causing that visitor to, to bounce Yeah, and uh, testing all the elements that you can possibly test to yeah. come up with a winning combination. Yeah. I like to go over like the lowest hanging fruit, right? So I want to almost go reverse customer journey, Like right? Most people are like, oh yeah, let's the headline. I want to start with the cart abandonment because they've already, they're in the cart. It's mind blowing <laughs> that, you know, 90 or 95 or 100 out of 100 will put something in their cart and then abandon it. So what are some things or mistakes people are making, first of all, that are causing bounce? And then what are some things they can do to prevent the bounce? A couple of things are, I mean, we always look for kind of some of the key elements. Are they telling you? So you're on the checkout page. You're actually on the checkout page ready to enter your credit card information. Mm. What does that process look like? A lot of companies will have a register or log in or sign up or something like that as their first step, which causes like, friction. Eh, and Right, friction. Right. Yeah. We're trying to remove friction from this process. Some companies will have a six or seven step process to, to check out. And we're trying to reduce that down to as minimum steps as possible. So we'll look for the number of steps. We'll look for, are they continually selling? Are they relaying the benefits or the, you know, are they highlighting that what the guarantee is? So people the, don't get the remorse when they're pulling yeah. their credit card out. You know, highlighting any discounts that might be applied. Um, high, really emphasizing free shipping if you've got that. Um, using progress bars to show that it's a very simple process. Building that trust. Mm -hmm. Maybe a message from the CEO saying, or a testimonial from somebody. Mm -hmm. um, we're just highlighting any of those elements, maybe a trust seal, a security seal, mm. um, highlighting the guarantee, satisfaction guarantee, return policy, all of these things that help push those visitors in. And then we're going to look for the number of form fields because so many people will ask for so much information that's just not necessary. Right. So we'll try to eliminate some of the form field steps to just the minimum needed and making sure those form fields are mobile friendly. So they have, you know, like Google Autofill, for example, is ready there because you don't want to, you want to, because majority of the visitors are going to be mobile these days. Yeah. Uh, so you want to make that mobile experience. That's another mistake people make is they don't, they know, oh yeah, I've got a responsive site, but they don't focus on actually the mobile experience of yeah. that responsive site. Um, another thing that we do to help fix that is using exit intent offers mm. um, where we'll actually, they're going to leave the page anyway. So give them an opportunity to maybe save or get a bonus, like maybe if you're in the beauty space or something like that, give them a bonus sample size or a deluxe sample size of mm. one of your best selling products. Um, we did another case study where we gave them a coupon code, check out right now and get save 10%. And we picked up 30, I think it was somewhere close to like 36%. Wow. Wow. Of the visitors that were leaving, actually, we use that coupon code to purchase. So people who don't know what X and 10 is, you actually go and you, you're leaving the page, you click the X, and then instead of closing the window, something pops up to give you some kind pops of yeah, yeah deal or something to, to have you stay on the page, right? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're leaving your site anyway. I mean, yeah. yes, you've got retargeting, you've got all of these other tactics and methods to bring them back, but right. you've got them on the page. Right. You know, why just send them off to a retargeting ad and say, oh, save 10% there yeah, when you've got... What works with the message on the exit intent? I mean, coupons, do people do anything humorous, like to, to break someone's pattern or anything? Or is it mostly yeah, just straight I mean, discounts? Like, what have you seen work for the exit intent? Depends on how creative the company wants to be. Right. I mean, some are pretty straight laced that just want to stick with the normal message. Others, you know, will let us have fun with it. But yeah. whatever you can do to offer up something of value, it really depends on what you're offering. I mean, if you're selling a $600 mattress or a $1,000 mattress or something on an e-commerce store, it's going to be very hard to give them something a bonus. Or maybe you can offer them a free pillow or right. you know something to give that added value that maybe doesn't cost you that much to fulfill on. Yeah. And it'll far outweigh any of the additional you know, discounts or anything that you might apply. But typically, I'll, if you can offer something of value, I always like to add something first before you give them a big discount. Yeah, that's a good one. What have you seen um, as far as the exit intent? I know you work with a lot of e-commerce people. What's been one of the more creative ones that people have tried that's worked? 
Um, I mean, nothing crazy that I comes no. to the top of my head. Um, nothing crazy. Yeah, that I, I like really the I like what you said about super adding strange. rather than subtracting, right? Like giving yep. something so you're not discounting your your product um, to people, essentially. Yeah, you're you're not bringing the value down of the yeah. the overall positioning of the value of the product. But we've also seen this too in like even subscription e-commerce world where instead of some people will go immediately for a free trial, hey, sign up for our box or whatever, our monthly subscription and get a free trial. But then that just brings in tire kickers and other types of offers. So then to say, how about you get double on your first order right. instead of that? And you'll see you a big a swing buyer. in quality yeah. customers. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like researching you, Justin, you're really a direct response marketer at heart in some, in some I respects. I got my start in direct response marketing. So, yeah, who did you learn from? What, uh, who are the, the greats that you, you looked at? Oh, I started out writing copy. Um, so, obviously, the copywriters. You know, I followed, like, Gary Bensavenga, mm. Halbert, um, John Carlton. I looked up to people like Eben Pagan when before he decided to reveal who he actually was <laughs> as he was the David, David D'Angelo. D'Angelo. Yeah. Yeah. So I looked up to all of that. In fact, a lot of his stuff was included in my first ever info product. Really? Uh, what was your example. first ever info product? Um, I created a course called just add traffic mm-hmm. like way back in like 2005, something like that. I was still an affiliate marketer at the time and it was how to build squeeze pages and landing pages using things like front page and you know going way back to like microsoft front page so we had a manual and dvds and it was crazy mail to you and all of this stuff yeah it was pretty fun um but yeah we included a lot of his examples in there how do you stumble across people like gary benzavenga and gary halbert i feel like even a lot of people i know if you said those names a lot of people wouldn't know who those people are and those are like considered some of the top direct response copywriters of all time? Um, I got to think, I mean, a big part of that was my former business partner and mentor, Mike Dillard, Mm. for that because I eventually became business partners with him after I was a number one affiliate for him, um, like 07, 08, 09. And he turned me on to the really early on the copywriting side um, of, of everything because I was in the, you know, the network marketing type niche and just really figuring out the psychology behind why people do things. It just naturally led me to the written word. Yeah. That's smart of him to bring on his top affiliate mm-hmm. as right. <laughs> what yeah, was we, the product? We did pretty well. Time? Um, that was magnetic sponsoring at the mm. time. What is that? Um, or we taught network marketers, internet marketing mm. is essentially how to, how to recruit based on his best selling book, uh, magnetic sponsoring which has stemmed the whole um, attraction marketing kind of craze that is now in network marketing. So what were you doing at the time? Because I think I was reading that when you came on, it helped boost whatever was going on, like 400% or more or whatever it was. So yeah, when we joined forces, it was uh, me, another guy, and Mike. When we joined forces, I think that first year we grew the company like 460%. Wow. Something crazy so like what that. Were you, what did you do? Um, maximize customer value. That was the the biggest thing. So we added strategic upsells. That was before, right when kind of the craze was coming out where one-click upsells was, you know, really starting to happen. Now mm-hmm. everything is one-click upsells. Um, so we added that, increased our customer value. So instead of selling a $40 book, we were now selling, you know, $250 worth of stuff on day one. Um, so just really maximizing that. That's what really catapulted it for us. What did you find work? And I know people have different viewpoints on this. Is there a certain price you don't want to go beyond with a one click upsell like that? Like if it's a $40 book, you don't know what were you? I mean, yeah. I mean, I typically will like to do the same or double, um, on that first upsell. Mm-hmm. Um, but we've even offered up $5,000 really? mastermind memberships as upsells wow. and had, you know, one to 2% of people take that. Uh, so you can sell pretty much whatever. It's just the positioning and the level of trust right. that you have in there. Yeah. But a lot of people will, what I always typically like to say, especially like in the consumable space, is sell more of the same. So they bought something and say, okay, now you can get four more or six more 
um, and get whatever discount on, you know, per item or whatever it is. Um, so it can be very similar. I think one right now, if they buy like a $200 offer, they get, I think it's like 170 or something like that on the upsell. Um, on the first is episode, that so it's a physical long. product or is it a? That's a physical. Is it? Okay. Yeah. Um, have you seen a sweet spot there? I know I've heard different people talk about that. Let's say they buy, like you said, a consumable, like a supplement or something. They buy one bottle. Mm-hmm. What would be the next um, volume that you'd want? Because you could offer three, you could offer six, you can offer whatever. What have you um, seen something that typically would... don't go more than three off mm-hmm. a one bottle purchase? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm pretty ingrained in the supplement world, so yeah. Um, yeah, you typically don't offer that, but some maybe a buy two get one free, mm-hmm. or something like that. That's not too much out of the out of the way. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I've seen people get it by with offering six more if they bought one. They don't convert as well, um, and we've seen a bigger boost when you offer lower quantities to those mm-hmm. lower buyers. Yeah. So I want to go on. We'll call this the reverse customer journey with right okay. the card banner, but. I just can't help myself with this this increasing average order value because that's one of the things that you help companies with, right? Mm-hmm. So talk a little bit about um, what's a couple good examples of how, I mean, that was one from you, right? How you increased average order value. What's some maybe from the consumable piece? Um, I mean, I have a couple listed here, Dr. Axe, Blue Jeans, Sunfrog shirts. I don't know if any of those would be an example of um, increasing average order value? Um, I don't know them specifically as far as case studies that we ran for them. Yeah. Um, Blue Jeans, Blue Jeans is actually a software. So oh, it is? Oh, okay. Yeah, it's not It's not Blue Jeans, believe it or not. Um, they're actually a video conferencing software. <laughs> Go figure. Um, it, was, it was weird, yeah. But, um, but we have, I mean, it's, it's really just trying to maximize that initial purchase, whatever you can mm-hmm. get out of them. I mean, there's some examples where we had one company that had their cost per acquisition was extremely high. Yeah, it, They were spending about $80 to acquire a customer. And we were able to cut that down to about 20, uh, as low as 10 through optimization. But then we were able to get, not only were they profitable quicker, but they were buying more stuff mm-hmm. as a result because we were able to position things in a strategic way. If you think of things like um, Amazon, for example, mm-hmm. you go in and says, those who bought this also bought this. Yes. But they it's not just some random stuff. They actually know what other people have purchased. Right. So offering something up complimentary, I'm, I'm thinking from an e-commerce perspective. For sure, yeah. Um, but even on like the supplement side, most people will just maybe some people will go on this endless cycle <laughs> offering upsell after upsell after upsell after upsell instead of being strategic about it i typically will say don't offer more than three so you can really not basically for lack of better terms piss off your customer yeah. it, it, that you just acquired in the door but you're also going to increase your average order value as a result so that allows you to spend more to acquire a customer i use an example of a former client slash very good friend of mine that sold his company recently. Um, I'm not going to mention names because it's it was a very large purchase. We'll just say that. Mm-hmm. And um, they just said, we're going to out convert everybody. Yeah. And they were able to go negative a little bit, but they were able to acquire customers at such a higher rate because they were willing to pay more. Yeah. Bless you. <laughs> so it didn't blow out your ears, but yeah, sorry about that. Um, but they would come in and these visitors would come in and buy like a $50 product. But due to the upsell chain, they were yeah. averaging probably closer to $200. But so, then that yeah. allowed them to then spend $200 to acquire a customer because yeah. then they had a customer. And that essentially allowed them to buy up more traffic and outperform 
and basically eliminate any competition because they knew their numbers so well that they yeah. knew that lifetime value of the customer was going to be a lot higher. So, I mean, the average order value was increased and then the lifetime values increased so they can just, they can spend a lot more to acquire that customer. Um, with So what were they doing to increase the order, the average order value? You mentioned obviously having those, you know, if you bought this, you bought this. What else do you find was working for them? Um, Post-checkout. That's one thing that a lot of people don't do in the e-commerce world. It's becoming a little bit more prominent now in the kind of the Shopify circles, thanks to solutions like Cart Hook and things like that. And I'm, I'm friends with Jordan Shout over there. Shout out to Jordan. I've interviewed Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jordan's great. I actually interviewed him on my podcast. Oh, did not you? Too long ago. Cool. Yeah, we had a great conversation talking about average order value, believe it or not. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's taking that journey before on e-commerce, it's like, okay, they purchased and whatever they had in their cart, that's what it is. Instead of offering them something more, or we've even done it to the point where they add something to their cart and they click the next button and you give them another opportunity. So pre-checkout upsell Mm -hmm. um, will also work to just bring to the front of mind that there's more stuff. Or uh, a good trick on e-commerce is if you have like a free shipping threshold, maybe you it's over $50 and you have something for $45 in mm. your cart, you give them a pop-up that says, oh, you're $5 away from getting free That's shipping. Cool. Yeah. Continue shopping, but you can give them a link to continue shopping, but you also give them three to four complimentary products right there that they can simply add to cart. Mm. Um, so you just, again, removing those friction steps to get push them into where you want them to go. Yeah. Is there a good software or plugin or something for that that you recommend? Um, LimeSpot. Well, we had to code that one custom. Okay. Um, There's your new product, your new SaaS product. It, you there heard you it go. here first. <laughs> <laughs> but you do. Um, Anyone wants a beta version of that? Contact Justin. <laughs> <laughs> it's only. I don't know if I want to go down the software. Fifty dollars a route. month. No. <clears throat> I don't know if I want to go down the software yeah. route again. But um, I'm looking back at my list here. Yeah, I think uh, LimeSpot is one mm-hmm. um, that allows you to do that one-click option. Mm-hmm. And I think you can customize it some to allow what you mm-hmm. need to do. But that that free shipping threshold thing, there's a lot of plugins out there mm-hmm. that you can add to sh- specifically to Shopify. Magento is going to be a little bit harder. Yeah, uh, I think BigCommerce even has some that are integrated there too. Mm-hmm. But um, you're going to want to um, customize that. Sorry, yeah. I'm sneezing in. So uh, you're allergic to <laughs> allergic to uh, free shipping pop-ups um, or to the thought of doing SaaS, maybe. Um, maybe I'm allergic to going into the software. <laughs> yeah. um, so how do you spell limes? Is it like the, the fruit, L-I-M-E? Yep, lime, oh, lime, lime okay. and spot. Okay. Yeah. So what that's, li- that's a one-click recommended product engine. So it'll add those who bought also bought this, and then you might be able to customize that. Got it. Um, but at the very least, um, go in and just you can code up that pre-checkout upsell or that free shipping threshold thing. I believe there's plugins for that. Mm-hmm. I can't remember the name off the top mm-hmm. of my head. But always af- offer a continue shopping link. So many people will say, oh, you're this far away, but they don't give them a way to take the next step. Mm. At the very least, that's going to help you increase your average order value. Mm. So what is the list that you're looking at behind you? Like what's on there? Oh, I just have a list of softwares that I've used um, okay. on different things. <laughs> so I always like to know what's behind it because there's always a story behind it. So what? It's what's a, on the What's on the list? It's, it's just a scribble on a legal pad. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing fancy. So what's on the list? What What softwares? Oh, just I've got things like TrustGuard, um, Report Mojo, Optismo, Help Scout. Eye tracker 360, um, Flexify, Lime Spot, Recart, <laughs> Retarget app, Sales Counter. <laughs> I got all What's sorts sales of counter. It's an analytics. <laughs> oh, Sales Countdown. Sorry. Oh, gotcha. Um, yeah, it offers a, a, a countdown on the checkout. Nice. You're looking a free free offer there that's for those that want to be a little more aggressive well i think i mean even i think eventbrite does that on their page 
I think it's Eventbrite, right? I mean, they when you go to check out, they're like, you have. I'm like, what? What's going on here? I have two minutes. They're like, but they, it just converts better, I guess. Vistaprint, Vistaprint has the same thing. They do. Yeah, a small countdown timer. It's like your item is going to be saved in the cart for this long, mm. or your discount only available for this long. Um, and depending on the type of traffic that you're running to it, um, you could get away with it. Yeah. Um, so we give a shout out to Jordan with Card Hook. Any other Shopify plugins that you recommend since uh, we're talking e commerce? Let's see. Privy is another one. Upsell on Exit. Mm-hmm. That's that's actually a plugin that you can use. Recart's a really good one for abandoned cart. So if they add something and they start typing into their Shopify checkout, mm. you can actually it'll trigger an email. So it'll capture that information. Mm. They fill out there because the first two fields on Shopify are um, name and email. Mm-hmm. So start typing that in, and if they abandon at that point, then they get triggered into an automatic email sequence. Mm-hmm. Any other ones that you recommend typically? Persistent cart is another one. Hmm. Retarget app's a great one for dynamic uh, Facebook ads. Hmm. Makes um, it a lot easier. <laughs> what about Justin guarantees? Right. Let's go back to the direct response copywriting piece because guarantees on the you know I feel like people don't have guarantees or what converts best with guarantees um, because they could have them on the home page or they could have them on the checkout page like you mentioned what works best for guarantees let's say I mean again like maybe e-commerce maybe a product because uh, you could do 60 you could do 90 you could do lifetime I mean you can um, go lifetime you can say if you don't like it I'm going to give you your money back plus whatever I, mean, I don't know what's what have you found um, converted? we use one in the supplement world right now that's we offer them a hundred bucks. What's if what on top of it? On oh, top of it. Like so it. Like, if they don't, if they try it out for a full ninety days and they don't experience what it is that we're saying that you're going to experience, yeah. we'll give you a hundred bucks on top of your refund. How I mean, we have relations yeah. in there, and you're going to have less than a handful mm-hmm. that are going to request it. Um, but it works extremely well. How do you, Another, I mean, you probably don't get it that frequently, but if you do, what's the, is it just a no questions asked or do they have to prove they actually used it for 90 days? They got to prove that they used it for 90 days. So like we want blood samples, stool samples, urine samples. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. No, it's just, <laughs> we need send, us, send us your empty, I mean, you know, essentially, <laughs> I mean, there's a little bit of, I mean, somebody, some people will take advantage of it, but very yeah. few and far between. Yeah. yeah. Uh, another example cool. that we've done is um, we used to have a 30-day guarantee on an info product thing, and we raised it to 90 days, mm-hmm. and we almost doubled the conversions. Mm. We raised it to one year from 90 days, and we doubled the conversions. Wow. But what we found is the majority of the refunds came in at ni- within 90 days anyway. Mm. Of course, you had the rare one that will email you two years later and say, I need, you know, my kid got kidnapped and I need my <laughs> 40 bucks back or something. <laughs> Which was a true, which was a true excuse. You actually got an excuse like that? Yeah, actually got an excuse like that. The kid was kidnapped and what? So what does that have to do with the info? Kid got kidnapped and they needed their forty bucks back. It was like a year and a half after they purchased for ransom money. Yeah, I guess. Wow, just crazy. But um, another is we had a a client not too terribly long ago that he had a one year guarantee. We raised it to a lifetime guarantee. Mm -hmm. Nobody else in the market was doing it. Mm. Um, and his conversion rates just spiked hmm. because we were able to position it that we're, we stand behind our products for life. And it was just an info product for this particular right. case, but um, it just dramatically boosted it. And again, your refunds are all going to come in within the first, you know, 90 days normally anyway. Yeah. So it's all, part of it is looking at what other people in the industry may be doing also, but maybe being a little adventurous because I feel like guarantees if it doesn't make you a little uncomfortable it's not good enough yeah you and know? you gotta obviously you gotta look at your merchant account providers too because some won't allow you to run longer guarantees like that as risk of you know chargebacks and things like that mm-hmm. um, some will limit you to 90 days um, but go as far as you can go out there and the, mm-hmm. the bolder you're gonna be with that I mean 
you know, you even take a page out of like Zappos, for example, that'll do free shipping and return. They'll pay for your return. Yeah. For you to ship it back and just taking that barrier to entry, especially yeah. that friction point out of the equation will, will usually increase your conversion. Yeah. So cart abandonment, a lot of low hanging fruit there. Yeah. If we start to reverse back, what's the next low hanging fruit piece? So I guess they're they're going and they're just surfing the site and then before that they've actually just entered in some, you know, maybe a landing page, maybe it's a, a shopping page. Where's the next big low hanging fruit that people should pay attention to? Usually it's the cart page. Mm. Um a couple examples there. I mean, and then you got your product detail pages, mm -hmm. which is usually where a lot of people will drive their traffic is directly to a product detail page. Mm -hmm. Is I guess we could start there and kind of work at the cart because I got a intermediate <laughs> idea there too. Yeah. But um, the product detail page, most people try to clutter it up with so much stuff that you just need to strip it down, get a very benefit driven um, description of your product, yeah. make it very easy to select the options. So say if you're selling women's clothing, don't make them jump through a bunch of hoops to pick size and color. Yeah, particularly on mobile. We've got a case study where we increase their mobile checkouts 30 plus percent. Yes, I read that one. That's pretty cool. Yeah, all because we just expanded the options so they didn't have to tap and then select, tap and then select. Um, and then having good quality images, you know, the most, the, the problem with online is we don't have the luxury of people to touching and feeling and and trying on the product. So we got to give them that experience the best that we possibly can yeah. online. So don't skimp on your images. And then mouse over zoom is what I particularly like over click to zoom. Mm, um, yeah. So it just makes it very seamless. And then recommended products on that page and then highlighting your guarantee, your return policy, your free shipping if you have it using icons i like to use icons a lot with things so it's easily consumed because yeah. people are skimmers and then um a big bold contrasting add to cart button with a lot of removing the other distractions remove social from the page because a lot of people will say oh add this click on pin it right. on pinterest or something <laughs> then you're just, off on pinterest and yeah you're never you're, to return then you're looking up recipes for next week. So, no, you got to just keep the attention span. And I like to say it's holding the path, holding the visitor's hand on the path of least resistance yeah. to the end goal. And then when they click the add to cart button, a lot of people will maybe shoot it up into the upper right hand corner and say, oh, you've got one item in your cart or they'll have a pop up. Um, some people, it just stays on the page and then you have you don't really know what to do next. I mean, I do because I see hundreds of them. Right. But it's always in the upper right-hand corner. Yeah, you have, you have to, to find it and then click yeah. on it and then, yeah, exactly. Or if you have a pop-up, you've already added it to the cart, recommend some additional products to them or give them a special discount or offer right on that pop-up to take them to the next step. Say, yeah, one-click add, we're done, and then redirect them to the, the checkout or the cart page. And then on the cart page, it's just carrying over a lot of those elements. Maybe you can add some social proof um, highlighting that it's 100% secure. Most people just say your shopping cart instead of saying 100% secure shopping cart. Yeah. Um, highlight your security seals if you've got them. Um, I mentioned trust guard earlier. That's one that we test a lot with mm. um, or whatever your SSL certificate gives you. Then um, make, don't have all the buttons the same color or have them all be buttons. So if you have a continue shopping link or update cart link or something like that, make them links not buttons because you want to again lead the visitors down the path mm. and make the button the same color as what it was on the previous step and make it bold and obvious sometimes even adding it above at the top will will boost conversions and then carrying over that security the guarantee the free shipping yeah. all of those icons over onto that page to kind of continually sell the process yeah probably you find a lot of these elements are non-existent right because people a lot use, of cases, yeah. yeah. Um, is there a good, have you seen any company do the picture, like the product page really well? 
like the pictures are good and I don't know, maybe you have a, a blog post on this. Um, um, I'd have to look, see exactly who we've got. Um, um, like I know some of the ones on the, on your page, I mean, you have a lot of cool companies like the Sunfrog shirts, Guitar Zoom, <laughs> eChurch, Global Golf. Um, any of those you feel like, okay, these guys do charge tech they do charge tech charge tech had a we actually ended up redesigning their entire page mm. their entire site mm. um i'll have to pull it up and see what's all stuck on there but yeah um to see but i mean anyone did. who's who's listening as you're doing that um if you go to conversionfanatics.com and you go to right below in the middle where it says check out some past results, people should check out and read 1,892% um, increase. It's really, you guys break it down in such a cool way of redesigning a landing page. Um, yeah. And before and after pictures, I can't do justice by talking through it, but just go to that um, and it will show you before and after pictures and um, all the elements that you know Justin is really talking about with the trust and the um, the testimonials and the social proof and and how it was redesigned and actually what the lift was with certain elements. So people should check that out. It's just amazing. It's like '80s, and then it's bringing it to to the present, right? Yep. And and maybe sometimes I would think sometimes ugly. Sometimes does outconvert new, but in this case, it didn't. You know, it it does on on a lot of cases, but it's just really that particular case study. It's just emphasizing some of the key elements, and there was it wasn't that we just re decided to redesign it one day. Right. We actually tested some of those elements on right. that original page to see what held the most weight, and it came down to the social proof and how it works. Is really yeah. what it came. And also, it's almost like you focus them in on one piece. Like if you look at, there's, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on, but it's really centered with the get started now element yep. of where you're directing them to go, you know? Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, a good example of a uh, minus the mouse over Zoom is Charge Tech that has a good clean layout mm -hmm. of their product detail page. They have clicked the Zoom still, mm -hmm. but... They got a lot of images and FAQs and things around the product, and then a video showing the and highlighting the product. Mm. Yeah, um, that's there's a lot of elements that go into each piece of this. So, cart abandonment it's, product. Page, that's why so many people don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I mean, this is low hanging fruit. I mean, they should be doing it, right? Because it's low hanging fruit. Like someone's on your checkout, ready to buy your stuff, and then they abandon, or they're going to. I mean, they should, you know, optimizing the big stuff, right? So the product detail page, and then up to the, the front, right? Um, what, I guess? Why don't we look at? I always like looking at. Uh, let's look at conversion fanatics. Right. Yeah. So you guys have gone through, who knows, tens of thousands of different iterations, six overhauls of the site. Um, tell us what's on the page now and how you got to this. Right. If anyone goes to conversionfinax.com, they should follow along with this. And, you know, who knows? Maybe they've changed something since you're listening to this right now that they've <laughs> optimized. So it should be interesting to see if it's not there. But I'll tell you my. I want to hear your analysis because the deep dive analysis and the behind the scenes analysis for me, it's, I see pink button. I should click on it, right? Get yeah. your free conversion analysis. I'm also thinking from, from my perspective for you, I don't even want you doing a free conversion analysis. So I'm curious of why that is free because your time and your team's time is very valuable. And this is, this is <laughs> worth a lot of, this is very valuable for someone. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, that I'm like, this guy's crazy. He should not be giving this away for free, in my opinion. Um, so there's probably a reason for that. But um, then you have the, you know, th that's what I see just going to the page thinking, Justin, I know you should not be giving this away for free because any advice you give is going to be super valuable. And two, I should be clicking on the get your free conversion analysis button. But 
But tell me what's on the page a bit. Yeah. So we have a lot of inbound or, or not a lot of inbound for our stuff. But yeah. like you said, we've overhauled this site about six times, yeah. I think, in four years. So it's, it's had some iterations done. And we're, in fact, building up to probably do one in Q1 again. Yeah. Um, well, you're to, always, to redo be, always be testing, right? So That's it. Yeah. Um, so a lot of the elements were that, you know, we've done all sorts of different iterations. We've had the form field up on above the fold of the page. We've had all of these different elements, but we're just trying to really slap them in the face. Okay. Who we are, what we do, and then give them a way to have that low barrier to entry. Um, free conversion analysis. Yeah. We have charged up to four grand for it. Yeah. But it's like what Perry Marshall always calls, it's the bleeding neck syndrome, where, you know, if you go into the hospital and you have a, the sniffles, you're going to be waiting a while. But if you come into the ER with blood squirting out of your neck, <laughs> you're going to the front of the line. Right. So it's, it's that kind of scenario, the irresistible offer to really get the conversation started. Right. And then we have the filtering process on the back end that... Yeah. You know, we don't just give it to everybody right. that can possibly come through. But right. if we can actually help them, then, yeah, we will. Yeah. Um, you know, we get a lot of people that come in and be like, oh, I just started my new store. And I, it's like you don't have any data to analyze. So there's right. nothing we can really do. Right. Um, but I'll give them a few pointers and then we'll just move along our way. Right. And then one big change that we actually made was check out some of the past results. Yeah. We found that people didn't care so much about the rest of the stuff on the page as they did about the results. Mm. So we moved that up about three sections. How um, do you decide on that verbiage? You know, like as a, yeah, as opposed to our biggest case studies or success stories or whatever, increase your site or um, doesn't matter. Because people want to know that yeah. it's all results driven. Yeah. So yeah. nobody really cares about case studies at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. It's what are the results. Right. Um, you know, you can read everywhere on the internet. I mean, you, heck, you can go to our blog and read, you know, 75 case studies. But it's really about positioning it as a benefit statement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That here's some of the past results we've been able to deliver. Um, and getting them thinking about that from a psychology perspective. And then moving on to how we help you do that. So yeah. it's taken yeah. through kind of a structure of here's some of the ways we can help you. And then they can click and expand on some of those things and then read more about the services and then kind of our basic process. So the and biggest the changes were moving the past results up, putting that um, big button. What else? What the else Forbes made a big thing difference? was a big one. It was. It was. Yeah. Um, added a lot of credibility. What um, else on this fact, page? I've had people see like, wow, Forbes, amazing, um, when they've talked to us. So um, it was definitely a benefit. Instead of the normal as seen on Forbes, um, you know, type angle, which can work, um, we just tried to lead them down. This and looks this like page a little is more very official. Linear. We, yeah. yeah, we tried to be very linear and not have, yes, we have a bunch of links at the top, but it all kind of jumps to page. So we tried to make it as, as most one page as we possibly can. Yeah. And then talking, basically speaking to them about, you know, some of the results and then backing it up with social proof and then going straight for the, the actual form is way down on the page. Mm -hmm. What else made a big difference from the last version of this one? Oh, it was just completely overhauled. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> the last one was, the type font and everything was, was different and changed. It was very, it didn't seem as professional as this one did was, was a big aspect is people didn't really trust. So we tried to build a, a more of a level of trust mm -hmm. behind mm -hmm. the actual over arch of the, of the site rather than, you know, look more professional than our last one. That was kind of, our last one was very white and lots of blue and, you know, I, I could dig and probably find it, but um, we just tried to make it very s streamlined. And one of the bigger things that we did was we stripped out all the acronyms. So many people like here, we've got this amazing framework. Um, this is doing a lot of competitive analysis for us, but we have this framework that we follow and all of this stuff. And we stripped it down to make it very simple. Ours mm -hmm. was 
we're going to analyze, we're going to design, we're going to experiment. That was all that's, we're just going to strip it out. No crazy acronyms. And that seemed to help a lot. Tell people exactly what we do. Yeah. Um, we're going to be the muscle. We're going to be the brains behind helping you guys test faster mm-hmm. is essentially, and this was a lot of asking potential clients and surveys and a lot of qualitative data to really identify some of the key areas and then mixing it out with a lot of heat maps and click maps to yeah. build on these use cases. That's where we found where the um, case study results had to be moved mm. because of that. It's pretty fascinating to look at those heat maps. It is. Um, I wish more companies would use them more often. It's kind of shocking that most don't. Do you have a preference? Specific type of heat, uh, uh, software for that? Um, our our go-to right now has been Hotjar. Hmm. We like Crazy Egg, um, True Conversion from the guys at Digital Marketer. Um, that's That's been a good one too. Um, Hotjar has just been our go-to one mm-hmm. for the longest time. It so, just, it's solid. So Justin, I know right now you're probably testing different things with whatever, Optimizely or Visual Website Optimizer, whatever you're using. What are you testing, like above the fold wise? What are you testing? I, I'm seeing the, a page. I'm probably seeing a page that's converting the best, but there's probably something that was that I'm not seeing because it's not converting at all, right? With a uh, we're building or, a new test right now with having the form be horizontal hmm. <coughs> above the fold. Okay. So instead of the big button that pops up, we're skipping that to just do a, a name and email first horizontally mm. across the page to maybe remove that friction step in there. Yeah. But it takes longer because we're not driving hundreds of thousands of visitors to our site. Yeah. Um, a lot of ours is we do get inbound, but a lot of ours is outbound because it's B2B. Yeah. Um, so we just, it takes longer for us to actually conduct experiments. So we try to leverage a lot of qualitative data over the quantitative more so, um, than we do so we do run split tests on it obviously but they just take so long that we try to leverage the other data where we can yeah yeah i find for you it seems like where you guys make the biggest impact is an e-commerce company and these are people not just starting out obviously you have to have data analyzed so you can test conversion e-commerce and then SaaS companies are big right that that need this yeah. type of stuff any others that you uh, find lead gen Lead gen. So lead gen companies, like we had one of the largest annuity retirement company in the mm. country, um, helping them with their lead gen and their demand gen. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we've got a finance company right now that does business, you know, business loans and, and things like that, that we're helping them with their lead gen. Mm-hmm. You know, they do equipment financing and things like that. Yeah. Um, and uh, we just signed up. Yeah. We just signed up a large cremation service. Really? Of all things. Yeah, they're a very large national cremation service. Oh. They actually just came on. I literally got it across my desk before um, we jumped on talk. So where do you start with conversion for them? <laughs> Again, that's, that's one of the questions that people ask me all the time. It's like, well, do you have experience in this market? No, but we're not in the B2C, B2B world. We're in the P2P world. It's just person to person. Right. At the end of the day, we are dealing with people. We all sell to the same stuff. We're right. dealing with people. They all have buying habits. They all have desires. They all have pains. Yes. You know, and it's, it's just following the data. And most of the best practices will transfer. Yeah. And give you a good starting point at least. Yeah. But where most people fall short with their optimization is – They'll just test random things. They'll just go out and shoot, throw stuff against the wall and see what sticks rather than following a process. So oftentimes, and one thing we have to educate our clients on is there's a method to the madness. We have to test incrementally. They're like, oh, why didn't we just redesign the page? And why didn't we test bigger something bigger or something? Well, we're testing incrementally to see what has the most weight on the page. So then that builds it up for better use cases. Mm-hmm. So we're trying to answer the question of why. And building that hypothesis on why we're actually testing something so we're learning because if it loses we want to know why it lost 
and we want to know all of those different scenarios so then we can build it up for bigger better use cases so we can set ourselves up for bigger wins long term yeah i mean just you have your hands full my friend because some people when you come in there they may not be speaking to the customer even right because yeah. you you talk you're really good at articulating this you know what i did was doing my research that you know people buy because of pain or pleasure right yep. and people are going by more like you said the bleeding neck because of a pain than a pleasure they may be speaking to the pleasure of something as opposed to the pain even yeah right yeah and and so many people will one of the biggest problems that i see is people will scream how great their product is or look at how many features we have but that doesn't do anything people don't care Features are features. They don't care about that. They care about what that is going to do for them. So I always say have a benefit and then support it with the feature. Yeah. You're going to get this because we do this. Yeah. On that topic, features versus benefits. So I'm going to ask you to talk about some features, even though – because we've talked about some we, – we know, if they didn't realize like doing some kind of optimization to your site, at this point, I'm going to give up. You're lost cause. But <laughs> – but um, I want to know from a feature perspective from conversion fanatics, you know, what type of, what do you do with clients? In other words, you can do like everything in the kitchen sink. What does that look like? Or are there other things that you kind of target for people? Like when they, they're like, yes, I want to bring on conversion fanatics. What does that look like? And I'm sure it, there's different levels to that, right? Um, we we pretty close to productized it okay. for the most part. Yeah, there's going to be different nuances, but um, we just try to test as fast as possible in in that process where traffic allows. Obviously, time in testing is the only limiting factor that we really have. So it's you so know, is that do they have enough types traffic? of packages like this cremation? Maybe they're like they're just their whole site's horrible and. I was thinking maybe someone needs a complete overhaul, but you the process is similar for everyone where you'll just test things incrementally. So I'm glad you brought that up on the overhaul. Yeah. Is so many people will in fact it, I wrote about this in a recent my recent article on Forbes, <laughs> which is that people will redesign their site and then they'll come run into me and say, Justin, my site's not converting as well as it is. It's like we just redesigned it, it looks amazing. But it doesn't convert as well. Well, did you make an educated redesign or did you just throw it up there because you thought that your creative director good. thought it looked yeah. better? Yeah. Um, so what often will happen, and I tell people, it's like, oh, we need to wait because we're planning on redesigning our site. It's like, well, let's test so we can make an educated redesign. And what typically will happen through the optimization process is you'll end up with a new site as a result. Yeah. So I always say take the educated approach because then you're you're knowing that your site is going to convert better. Mm -hmm. You know, we did it with one company that redesigned their site and instead of just throwing it up there as the new site, we actually tested bits and pieces of those elements and rolled it out slowly. Mm. And it resulted in, I think, like a 3,500% increase in engagement on the site yeah. because we knew what part of the redesign was actually going to be important. Yeah. And, you know, the thing is you're testing things based off a hypothesis, right? Yeah. So I'm curious, Justin, what are some of the big things? you? I'm sure you've put things up there testing two different things, and you're like, this one is for sure going to win, no doubt, but we'll test it because that's just what we do. And it completely failed. What are some failure, like just that lost that you thought it's a slam dunk, we're gonna test it anyways, but it just did not work. There's so many of them to list. It happens all the time. Um, that's the that's the crazy part about it. One is that you, you could so, have what are something you're so confident. I mean, you were just I've done this for ten years, like I know this is gonna work, and it didn't. So we did one, a big one. It was a big test. It took us a long time to set it up for a company. We planned it out. It was it was a lot of work that we basically removed an entire section of their site and it was 
a big section of their site and we moved that user journey over to the homepage where everybody was at. And we thought, sure, I mean, everybody in our office thought that it was going to win. It ended up losing by over 60%. Really? And it removed a ton of friction on the site and followed all of the data that we could possibly follow. We thought this was a perfect hypothesis and it ended up failing. So we went back and we're now iterating on that. This was a recent test. We're actually going back and iterating on that now. Why do you think it... uh... We don't know yet. We're breaking it down by piece by piece to see and looking at all the data again to just now we're incrementally testing on that new yeah to pull in the bits and pieces because sometimes your big swings <laughs> I talk I call them big swings because you're trying to hit the home run and sometimes they fall flat and you strike out and that is mm-hmm. one of them that struck out mm-hmm. yeah, yeah it happens all the time yeah I asked because you know like I forgot someone was telling me about one of these, you know, rooms and they had the top copywriters in the world and no one could agree on what would convert, right? Because you just have to test it. What's another one, big swing that was a strikeout that you thought for sure, no doubt, but did not work? Um... We actually redesigned a product detail page based on some of the stuff we talked about earlier. And the old clunky version converted to like 30% more. Mm. Why? I don't know why. I mean, we were all in line in brand integrity and everything like that. But we've, you know, made those big swings. And, you know, sometimes they fail. And you just got to learn from those mistakes. And that's the importance that I got to emphasize in the little disclaimer from this conversation is... Um, I spoke to an e-commerce group not too long ago, this this mastermind group, and I made a bunch of suggestions for all of their sites. And they come back a week later and they say, I made all these changes, but it didn't have any impact. It's like, whoa, hold on a second. One even came back and said, I spent two weeks implementing everything that you told me that I should test on my site without testing it. He just implemented it. Right. And he came back and he said, I screwed everything up. He said, I don't know what happened. <laughs> it's like, well... <laughs> you you got to test everything and, and not assume anything. Right. They weren't testing it. They were just changing it, essentially. They were just right? changing Th- it. There's a big difference there because the way you do it is you test it so you can see the breakdown of this compared to this and as opposed to just changing it and not, not having the metrics there. Yeah, and you have, I mean, one in six tests on average is going to be a winner. Yeah. What do you do with the other five? You learn from them, and you build upon that for future tests. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, and I don't know, man. I'm allergic to you or something. I got the sneezes today. <laughs> I, colds are going around, and and I everyone I've talked to has had a cold, and luckily you can't transmit it through Skype or Zoom. Yeah. So. <laughs> I, I don't normally get sick either, so I don't know what it might be. It's just something in the air in the office today. Um, but. What's been one of your favorite case studies? I'm looking at a few here in front of me. Um, it's a supplement company, monthly subscription take rate increase from 35 to 66%. There's another one that... Oh, you went, you went old school. 500% growth in acquisition in 60 days. Um, there's a double active paying subscribers in 90 days from a monthly subscription company. Any ones that stick out as one of your favorite case studies from from the conversion perspective? It doesn't have to be those or um, any in general. Even something simple, I'm, I'm looking at yeah. one that I posted just recently. Yeah. On there, it actually was removing products from the catalog page. Hmm. So we narrowed it from four products across to three and aligned the calls to action across the, the page. And I'm trying to see what the increase actually was. Um, it increased their revenue per visitor 40%, mm. um, 20% increase in conversion rate. Um, so what what ha- what did they do exactly? So the product page. Um, no, the catalog page. So yeah. when you click through like shop now on a homepage, you'll yeah. get listed with all these catalog, the, yeah. every product you've got essentially, or then you can break it down by category. Yeah. They had four across, but then the, the calls to action button were staggered depending on the size of the images. So mm-hmm. we really made the image size consistent, the calls to action consistent, and we removed one of the columns. So instead mm. of four, it had three. Mm. 
So we just made that shopping experience a little easier. So it enhanced and made the images a little bit bigger. Yeah. And just just made it a little cleaner feel. So what did the, what happened in the fourth? They just put it under a different category or something? No, just moved it down on the page. So oh, they just made it rows long instead got of wide. It. Okay. So you didn't take it off. Yeah. So it was kind of got moved down so that it's I it got it. So it's just three across. Um. Um. Let's see. I'm trying to. I'm just paging through here. And more customizations. No, that isn't a good one. There's so many of them on here that I can't. We run so many tests that it's like so hard to think about the ones that we actually have. Oh, one a good example. I, I remember one that was a very interesting one was we had a company that had a bunch of amazing clients. They had logos of all their, you know, some of their customers were Facebook and mm. uh all I mean, pretty much every Rosetta Stone and all Harvard and all of these things were their clients. So they had five logos across the bottom. And what we did was we thought, well, more here is going to be better. So we added a bunch more logos. And I think we brought the total up to three columns, um, something like that. Maybe we had 15 logos on there. Or t- no, we had 10. We went from five to 10. And it decreased conversions by 90%. Wow. What? So that's why when people say I, I use that in, in some of my presentations sometimes when I speak to right. is because people are saying, well, all the, I have all these testimonials. We're just going to run all of the social proof. And sometimes too much is yeah. less is better. Much. Which yeah, goes so in the product page. Yeah. It's really interesting. Um, yeah. So a f- I mean, I have so many. Uh, notes here justin and first of all i appreciate your time anyone should check out um conversionfanatics.com and what you guys do and you have some really good content on there um but i've two last questions for you um we'll say two sets of last questions one is i always ask as an inspired insider what's been a challenging more low moment in business and then on the flip side what's been a proud moment or milestone for you um because you know with entrepreneurship there's there's peaks and valleys um what's been more of a challenging or lower moment um lower moment is my old business coach calls it i peaked essentially where i was damn near on the verge of losing everything peaked um the, he calls it you you, you oh. peak essentially you've 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 hit your high point and the only way down the only way left is down and um, down the you've hit the peak of the mountain now you're going down the other side mm. and I tumbled down the other side mm. it, it was it was bad it was at a low point um, not to get too woo woo or fluffy but yeah. it was it was a bad time where um, right about when my daughter was b- born. Um, it was just a very depressing time. I just couldn't, I wasn't trusting myself and my instincts and my, mm. my knowledge from the previous, whatever, eight years or so that nothing was clicking. Everything I was doing was just not working. Um, you know, then the bills started piling up and eating into savings and doing all of that. Um, that was a big low point in my time where I, I thought, it's like, oh, how am I going to pay? I had a small little office. It's like, how am I going to pay office rent this month? And um, so the, the bigger upside to that was I snapped out of it. <laughs> was yeah, essentially, I, I started around. clicking. Thanks to a friend, um, he started recommending me for implementation because I, I was really good at implementing, you know, developing landing pages and, and getting the pieces of your funnel and everything into place, essentially building funnels. Mm. At the time, I was just, I just get stuff done. Right. Um, and he just recommended me to a couple other of his friends, and I snapped out of it. I started mm. getting back in the groove of things. I figured out the niche. And yeah. then people, then that's where kind of Conversion Fanatics mm. was born. Yeah. out of that because I kept getting asked more and more about the implementation. Pretty soon I had 10 clients myself and then yeah. I was 
bringing on then me and my business partner partnered up and expanded it and brought on employees and got the big office and did all of those things to really snap out of it but if it wasn't for my my good buddy who's been a veteran in this in the digital marketing space to for snapping me out of it and just trusting in me when i didn't um that really helped Mm. Uh, yeah that's amazing and what do you think it was? You think it's just anyone who's, I mean, we all face those things at one point or another, or someone's facing it now. Is it trying to get just small wins? What What do you think that helped snap you out of it? Because obviously you, you had it in you before, and then you started to not trust your instincts. What should someone yeah, do um, if, if they're you know experiencing that? I think mine was a lot of that I had now a new family to support. Mm. Um, you know, it wasn't just me and my wife anymore. Right. It was something greater than that. And I tried to push it so much. And I think I got so worried about money that it, I wasn't opening myself up to money for, you know, the lack of the mm. personal development woo woo stuff. But it, it just closed me off to so many different opportunities. I locked myself in my office and I thought I just needed to grind it out. Mm. And that wasn't the case. And then I really, what happened was, is I, found myself drinking a lot more Mm. and uh, I stopped that and really helped me kind of open up. I got more, I started working on me more rather than working Mm. and just grinding it out. Yeah. And since then I've, I've lost 55 pounds and I've done all of these things. And I've found, and I've actually found a direct correlation in me when I start taking care of myself, Mm. I feel that business goes a lot better when that's Things great. aren't going so well. I'll notice that I haven't been to the gym in a few days or a mm. few weeks. Um, I'm not eating as well. Yeah. Um, it just helps me think clearer and, and do a lot of the other things that I need to do. That's great advice. Thank you. Yeah. Because you often think just grind it out, just work harder. And sometimes it takes a step back of if you're not taking care of yourself, it's, yeah. it just makes everything go down, you know? It does because I mean your spirits aren't up. It was almost yeah. counterintuitive. I was just talking to an entrepreneur the other day, and he just got back from a vacation, and he was saying, "I need to take more vacations because I feel like I'm fresh. Like before the vacation, I get so much done, and after I'm fresh and I'm ready to go, and it almost seems reverse. Like no, you just got to grind it out and don't take the va- you know right. But he was well, we're- feel." We're in the Gary Vaynerchuk world where everybody <laughs> says grind and hustle every day. And I'm, I'm home by 4.30 every day, you know, to be with my kids. And I'm, yeah, I get to the office pretty early, but I, I still, you know, get yeah. that balance in there rather than just, you know, there's it's always tough. something to work on. Yeah, it's tough. It's a tough, I don't even like to use the word balance because I feel like I'm horrible at balance, but. Um, well, I think it, it's great at it since you got to practice and you run a couple businesses yeah that's bad balance on top though. of your practice that's bad <laughs> but um yeah <laughs> but personal balance to that is yeah, it, you yeah. know what i mean is another story i but. just started scheduling everything in right we've all got the same it's the cliche we've all got the same amount of hours in the day and all of this thing so yeah can't find time to exercise wake up an hour early i was at i was at kickboxing at 5 30 this morning love it and I was home when my kids got out of bed. You know, it was just perfect timing. And I do that three days a week. Mm. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that, Justin. I appreciate it. Um, on the flip side, proud moment, milestone in the business. When a proud moment milestone in Conversion Fanatics mm. was when we found somebody that can sell our service that was not reliant on me or my business partner. That's huge. That was a huge milestone for us. Yeah. We had failed twice previously. It cost us a whole truckload of money and lost opportunity costs as well as other costs. And we found somebody that can sell it and close deals without me having to necessarily be involved. Mm. So it's now, that's when I figured out that we have a business. Um, because it's no longer about me. Yeah. Um, yeah, my name's on it. I'm the face of it. I've got my business partner who's there, but he doesn't, he's all, he's not the one on the videos. He didn't write the book, you know, all of these things, but, um, it's less about me. I'm not involved in that. 
process as much anymore. Hmm. What was the turnaround from not having it work to having it work now? I mean, obviously, well, a person is a huge difference, but I mean, it has to do with something with training and things too. We hired a headhunter is what got us to really? do it right. We tried to go the other routes and hiring ourselves and finding it, but we bit the bullet and hired a headhunter, paid the ten grand, and they interviewed 150 plus candidates for us, and we got to interview one. And that's the person we hired. Yeah. So. Do you give them criteria? Like, what were you looking for? Yeah, it was a long screening process and everything what we were looking for, and specifically what we were selling and how we wanted to sell it and all of these things. And we found that out, and then we went through kind of a two month training period with that person, kind of a probationary period. Mm-hmm. And it worked out fantastic. She's been with us for a year and a half now. Mm. That's great. Um. So, Justin, last question. Thank you, by the way. This has been yeah. fantastic. I've had a, a blast, and I uh, hope you have too. Um, yeah, it's been fun. Check out Conversion Fanatics. But I have to ask, last question about, you were a professional bull rider. Wasn't professional. Oh. But I was a bull rider. Whatever. It doesn't matter. For- you were a bull rider. So, craziest bull rider story. You were actually oh. a bull rider. So like growing up or how did you get into bull riding? I started competitive bull riding at like age 13. Okay. Competitive, right? Okay. Not professional, yeah. but competitive bull riding. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I did the tours and I mean, I went to rodeos every weekend. I did, I did that whole thing. Wow. Um, but crazy story. Everyone's oh, it's the crazy I, story. Um, you get on a bull got, and that's, that's it. Let's see. The last ride that I ever did was I got put in the hospital for six and a half days. Um, got stepped on really bad. Wow. Had surgery. Did all of that Where stuff. Where did you get stepped um, on? Um, pretty much my butt. <laughs> um, and ended up with big laceration oh and had to God. get repaired and long recovery process. But I've broken ribs. I've broken toes, stitches in other places, my chin. Um Bumps, bruises, everything else in Jeez. between. I've probably been on over 500 of them, and I quit. And I quit by the time I was 21. So, Damn. so anything's easier than that, right? So, you <laughs> yeah. I mean, each their perspective, I guess. But I grew up around rodeo, so it was just kind of our thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a big part of what I did for a long time throughout high school and. In through college yeah justin i want to be the first one to thank you this has been fantastic everyone check out conversionfanatics.com and the cool stuff they're doing thanks justin yeah thank you for having me yeah what i got you can't buy it resides between my eyes walk through the fire came out better on the other side see nice like a beach if you find the sand right now I feel like a hundred grand